Welcome to Baby Boomer Tales. My name is Jim. Thank you for riding along today. You can find us at babyboomertales.com. Once you've reached our website, there are links to many places, including Facebook, our YouTube channel, our Twitter page, our LinkedIn page, Apple Podcasts, and other places you can hear our podcast. Also, you can visit our Boomers General Store while you're there at our webpage. Maybe get yourself a Baby Boomer Tales coffee mug. It's the middle of August. It's hot. It's humid. Don't they call these the dog days of August? I think they do. But do not despair. Fall is coming. September's right around the corner now. Just a couple weeks away. Once September hits in this country, the air becomes a little more crisp and dry. The days aren't as hot. The nights cool off nicely. September and October have to be some of the very best of this northeast Kansas weather there is. September up in the mountains where I was raised, that little hometown, little home county, north central Colorado Rocky Mountains, Towards the end of September, the leaves start turning and you have golden mountainsides with those quaking aspens. That's a nice time of year up there. But fall doesn't last very long. It really doesn't. Winter starts setting on you pretty quickly. At least that's what it feels like when you live there. And if you're a skier, which most people are that live up there, that's okay. Come on winter, come on. It's March and April when the rest of the world is having flowers and trees are leafing out. And days are nice and sunny and warm. Grass is turning green. Up there it's gray skies, mud everywhere, and brown snow. At least that's how I remember it. It can get very long and the spring is when most people choose to go on vacation up there. A couple of weeks ago... It was in the evening, I was sitting there watching TV. So I look out my family room window there, sitting in my recliner. The whole area is, I call my backyard, and I can see the farmer's field to the east of me. I can't see any houses or anything. I see a couple big trees. I can keep an eye on my little oak tree that is now about 18 feet tall. He's a young one, but he's getting along nicely. There's a little backyard, what I call, where I used to keep the dogs if I went out of town. I mean, you know, up to town or something. I didn't want them running around. I put them in the little backyard so they didn't go somewhere they shouldn't. And right on the other side of the fence of the little backyard is uh, where I keep my firewood. So it's about 30 feet of firewood stacked up there. And I looked and I did a double take and there was a mama cat and four kittens kind of coming down off the wood pile there, walking to the west. The kittens were, I'd say, eight to ten weeks old, right in that area where you give your kittens away. And I knew exactly what happened. No mama cat that lives around here is going to go traipsing away from where they live, which at least a quarter mile to the nearest neighbor. They're not going to do that. Someone, probably from the city up there, we're not that far from Kansas City, half an hour and you're in the suburbs, people drop their pets off. I have seen dogs every once in a while. One time, there was a bloodhound. He's a nice dog. No collar, no nothing. And Maxie was very interested in him, and she just happened to be in the little backyard at the time. So I petted the dog. He was nice and friendly, and I figured, well, If he's still around when I get back, we'll see what we can do about locating the owner. I knew that would be an impossible thing, but you have to try. You never know. Dog could just wander off somehow. Dog can cover a lot of territory. I got back from wherever I was going, and dog was gone. But I see dogs once in a while, and I know that chances are they have been dropped off by somebody somewhere that didn't want the responsibility, and they thought, We'll just take it out to the country. Those people, they take in any stray animal. Well, that's what I'm sure happened to this mama cat and the four kittens. I watched them and they kept kind of going towards the west, right through my backyard there, kind of close to the sliding door that I used to get to the backyard. 
So the next day, I just happened to look out that sliding glass door, and there was the little yellow one. The mom was gray, a couple gray kittens. I think there was a calico and a yellow, and the little yellow one was just laying there. First, I thought he was dead. I looked and I looked. I got the binoculars so I could look a little closer. No movement whatsoever. So I opened the door and walked down there, and he skedaddled underneath our cedar trees. I have six cedar trees, eastern red cedars, that are lined up there right by uh, my backyard there, and they were designed, we planted them years ago, so people couldn't see our pond from the road. And that's where he took off under those trees. So I went back in the house, and the rest of the evening, he'd come out, he'd lay around, he'd look around, he sat there. He did that for several hours. I told Kim, I said, you know, I don't know what happened to Mama and his brothers and sisters, but this guy's by himself. We never saw another one of the kittens or the mama. So I watched him and watched him. My wife is allergic to cats, but we used to have cats outside, and they'd come into the garage in the wintertime. Our garage is heated in the winter and cooled in the summer. I don't have a barn with, you know, holes in it that you could get in out of the weather. Our pole barn is only about 10 years old, and it's nice and tight, so it doesn't even let a mouse in there if I keep the door shut. So I decided, even though my wife was not in favor of me rescuing him because of her allergies, that the next day I would feed him and see if I could get close to him. Well, the next day I couldn't find him, couldn't find him. I put some milk out there with a little cream cheese in it, see if he'd come to that. Well, I waited two days and no kitten. I like to think that they just kept going to the west, but I have to think that possibly something happened to him. I started to beat myself up over it, but you know what? If I would have done it the day before, I would have never got his trust in time to bring him in before darkness. He just wouldn't have let me. It would have been a two or three day deal, feeding him, sitting there talking, letting him decide to come to me and not me trying to capture him. I guess I could have put a life trap out there and got him, but that would have caused all kinds of trust issues with that cat later on if I would have captured him. And I'd probably captured a possum or something instead. You ever catch a possum in a live trap? You'd swear they're dead. Then you kind of roll them out of it and they scurry off or waddle off. A possum more waddles than scurries. Anyway, I feel bad about that kitten. He was a handsome cat. Would have been. He reminded me of Ozzy. Our old male cat we had, Ozzy, lived to be 18. Here's another one. Slicing English muffins. You know, you buy them at the store and they say, already sliced. And that is hooey if I ever saw it. It is not sliced. That muffin, you have to take a serrated edged knife and kind of saw it open. It's a sorry state of affairs for being sliced. Well, I like English muffins. And I bought some the other day because the wife had bought some spreadable cream cheese a couple of weeks ago and we weren't eating it and I knew that we weren't going to eat it unless I got some English muffins to put it on. So I did. And so I'm sawing English muffins in the morning so I can spread that spreadable cream cheese on them and eat them. They're pretty good though. I have a list of things here I just want to talk about. I've been keeping it for a couple of weeks till I had a list long enough. Grocery coupons. Remember the days of cutting your coupons? Well, now everything's electronic. My grocery store, all I do is click clip and it saves it. And when I buy something, it takes it off. Well, the other day, as luck would have it, one of them didn't. It was two things of crystal light. We make lemonade out of it instead of real lemonade anymore because there's no sugar. And so I go to the customer service and the lady argues with me about it. So I had to give her an explanation of how the cow ate the cabbage, and she did give me my dollar fifty for my coupon eventually. It's a good way to run a relationship between customer and the store. I could go to any one of those stores. There's a bunch of them around, and there's one that's closer to me than the one I shop at. But the one I shop at is in the town that we raised our girls, and I'm used to it and all that stuff. I've got a new style of dress. You know, I'm not much on fashion, but 
until I was about 38, 39, my shoe of choice, when I wore shoes, basically, because I wore boots a lot, was a Converse All-Star, Chuck Taylor All-Star, the black one or possibly the white one. Since I was about 39, though, I have not had any. And my wife's been after me to get some shoes, and I talked about this a couple podcasts ago. So I bought two pair of shoes, but well, one of them was a black pair of low-top Chuck Taylor All-Stars. And that is my new shoe. I wear those with my blue jeans and a t-shirt that I don't tuck in anymore. I'm dressing like I was 16 again. No more Sansa belt for me. Not that I ever wore those, but you know what I mean? A lot of guys get my age and they start wearing some of those grandpa clothes. They probably have them from their grandpa. You know, grandpa dies, give them to dad. Dad doesn't wear them, so he passes them on to the kid. And the kid, now all of a sudden, he's 65 years old and he, hey, these look pretty comfortable. Now, I'm, I'm not making fun of you. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just making fun. What else is on my list here? The other day, two weeks ago, I had something about skipping watermelons. I talked about skipping, and I said skip, and I gave a definition of it, and I said as a noun and as a verb. Well, I went back and I listened to it, and I just read this off of something I Googled, you know, noun, verb, definition. And they had the noun thing all wrong, and I just read it, and I read it to you, and you're probably all saying, the guy doesn't know the difference between a noun and a verb. Well, you're probably right, but... I'm here to correct that now. The munchies were around. Where are they? I haven't seen them today. Huh. Yeah, that's nothing new. They'll be around. I'm surprised they didn't chime in just now. Anyway, they would say housekeeping, housekeeping, like they do, you know. So that's my housekeeping. Let's just use skip as a verb. I used it a couple instances during that podcast as a noun. But when I gave you the definition of a noun, I was was incorrect. I like to listen to the Moody Blues. I was listening to one of my music stations, you know, and it started doing Tuesday afternoon. And it tripped me back to when I used to just sit there, getting a little spaced out, listen to Knights in White Satin, ride my seesaw. It just really, I almost was there again. Rocky Mountain High. Oh, that's John Denver. Here's the last one on this before we carry on here. You ever hear that saying? You probably say it. I hear people say it all the time. I'm a big one on you got to watch your words. I believe the Bible. And the Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. Okay? So I try to be careful of what I say. You know? Ooh, I'm sick. Oh, I hope I don't wreck. You know, stuff like that. Well, here's one I hear all the time, and I never did like it, but I know people use it, and I'm not saying anything if you do. That's fine. I love them to death, or I just love her to death. Well, the way I've always seen it is you don't want to love someone to death. And I started thinking and pondering, so I Googled, you know, me and Google, and I really couldn't find anything where anyone knew what the origin of that was. But I really feel like... All of a sudden, it was shown to me what the origin of that was. I love you until death, or I love you till death. You know, in your marriage vows, till death do us part. I didn't use that in ours. I said forever and ever. I don't think you just stop loving someone. You might stop liking them. I don't think you can ever stop loving them. Love is a gift from God. How can you stop that? Even if you hate them, you love them don't you? So anyway, when you go, I love you to death, catch yourself. Think about it. Think about it. Our song of the week is Scars in Heaven. It was released in 2021 by the group Casting Crowns. It was written by band members Mark Hall and Matthew West. Mark Hall was inspired to write this song while watching his mom care for her parents as they passed away within a year of each other. The only scars in heaven, they won't belong to me and you. There'll be no such thing as broken, and all the old will be made new. 
are an usual fact, a house cat is genetically 95.6% tiger. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. I just want to speak real quick about the pet cemetery. I've always buried my pets. It started when Poncho died when I was 12 years old, my Cocker Spaniel. Then I buried Tuffy right next to him in a corner of our backyard in my little hometown up there in Colorado. When old Doe died, I buried her out on a hill and I made a mistake. The coyotes dug her up and hauled her off. But when Blue Dog and Chuck a Hawk and Kiki died, Kiki was the cat, I buried him in my backyard in my little hometown while my wife and my two daughters and I stood there and cried as I said a prayer over the graves. Today, I have a regular pet cemetery at the very back of my property. You have to go back there quite a ways to get to it. It's a nice shady spot where I have Sandy and Homer, two dogs that I had when I first moved out here. They grew old and died. Well, Homer had a brain tumor when he was about eight or nine. I've had friends bury their dogs here. I've had Mark bury his dog, Scout. I've had Bob, he's my brother-in-law, he buried his dog, Shadow, back there. I've had all kinds of cats back there that died. The latest one was Ozzy. I spoke about Ozzy before, yellow male. I just talked about him earlier this podcast. The way I bury these animals is after I dig the hole and then I, I, I bury them, I put the dirt back on. I used to use chain link fence I put on top of it, just lay it down. But I ran out of that chain link, so I put roof shingles over it and the reason is so the coyotes can't dig them up you know that's hollow ground to me and I don't want some dog that's just trying to look for a meal digging up the friends that I buried back there well I'm just talking about this because I'm still going through my Mr. Bojangles thing the dog up and died after 20 years he still grieved it's going on almost a year now with my Maxie and I buried her back there last October. I go visit her once in a while, talk to her, talk to Sandy and Homer also, give my regards to the cats, and I come home just a little melancholy. Start each day with a grateful heart and always be kind. I'll be back next Wednesday. Peace out.